Welcome to Is It Healthy, a podcast from Healthiest Radio. Our aim with this podcast is to bring all the latest news on natural, healthy, and sustainable products. We want to answer that basic question that we ask all the time. Is it healthy? We are highlighting the healthiest approved brands and experts that we hope you will all get to know. Thank you so much for listening to Healthiest Radio, Is It Healthy? And we're here today with Dr. Dustin James, who's a gastroenterologist out of Texas. And we're really excited to learn more about him, his background, and also his amazing product called Tummy Drops. So Dustin, thank you so much for being here. Crystal, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. So I I guess the first thing, we met a couple years ago at the Natural Products Expo. And we were really, it was such an interesting experience because we hadn't met anyone who knew as much as you did about these types of products and specifically around helping pregnant women, which is what we were interested at the time, but learn about really some GI issues that people end up taking some pretty interesting over-the-counter products like Tums that are less than healthy is the way I would put it. So, (laughs) So I would love I'd love to hear a little bit about your background and how you discovered this is an interest group for you. After I finished my, my training in gastroenterology, joined a group of, of gastroenterologists in St. Louis at the time. And, and very quickly, I, I came to realize that almost everybody has digestive problems at some point. Yes. And unfortunately, there's no easy cures. It's not something like strep throat in general where you, know, you can take an antibiotic and it's gone and you can kind of, kind of move on from that. Right. And so a lot of people would come in with conditions that would be either intermittent or it could be lifelong conditions and there's no cure. So we're, we're left often with what's called symptomatic therapy, meaning you, you can treat the symptoms. So you might not feel, you might feel a little nauseated, but you can take a medicine or a food change or, or something and then you, you can feel better. So traditionally, a lot of medical doctors and things are improving. We're very quick to not really address the, the food aspect and the lifestyle aspect, but would be, hey, let's, let's give you this medicine and see what happens. And, and I found that I was guilty of this myself, where someone would have a problem and say, well, this medicine can help. And then they would come back and, and they'd be doing a little better for the reason they came in, but they might have a side effect from the medicine, whether it's weight gain or constipation or a whole variety of things that weren't that, that good. So, and this was way back in 2009, in one month in particular, I I went home to talk to my wife, who's also a physician, she's a dermatologist, and said, man, I think the universe is telling me something here because I literally had 30 patients this week who really wanted something more natural and more dietary to approach their their digestive problems, whether it would be uh, like irritable bowel syndrome with bloating and pain and, and nausea or even people with celiac disease who were on a gluten-free diet but still had intermittent symptoms and said, well, let's, let's create a, a product that will be natural and something that wouldn't have these side effects that they can take and get benefits from. And I really didn't know what I was getting into at the time. It, it, it sounded so simple, and that's that probably the reason we, we did it, is that, man, there should really be something like this, um, but didn't really realize how much it would that. take to make it. Because yeah. you know, because you're not you're saying you're guilty of you know offering a, a medicine, but it's also because you weren't taught anything different necessarily in medical school, right? You had to uh, learn what you were going to put together that was on the natural side. Exactly. So that that's a big deficiency, at least historically in medical schools, is you might have four hours total dedicated to nutrition unless you took electives, and so. <laughs> We really weren't armed with, with great knowledge. And in, in, in gastroenterology, we do have more depth of, of kind of insights into nutrition and various aspects. Right. But even so, it's, it's, it's pretty minimal. I had the, the great fortune of working with, with two doctors in particular who are, are very, very well-versed on nutrition and the roles of the diet and mm-hmm. on, on human health, especially digestive conditions and and health. So I feel very fortunate. But even with that, it, it wasn't enough to really understand. And that's one thing that even 10 years later from when we rolled out tummy drops, I have a much greater understanding now. And some of that comes from research that's been done and, and just my own reading the, the medical literature that's out there. And some of it's just, just living 
and living in this society where unfortunately talk can be a little cheap and, and people right. are quick to make claims but not really support it. And and through my own experiences of, of trying to grow organic fruits and vegetables at my house nice. and you know so some of the shortcomings that even though you think it would be healthy because oh it's at Whole Foods and it's healthy. It's wow. not really that healthy and right. and so I continue to learn and then and do my best to apply that to tummy drops to really have it be the the, the best product. But well, that, yeah, going back to product that, research, I was just going to say that I, I really, it's interesting that you said you had four hours on nutrition because I was talking to a physician who was the head of the health and human services. And she just had this statistic that was like, we get a full year of, you know, pharmaceutical training and, you know, two to four hours of nutrition and it's just off balance. So it, it does, it is interesting that you took that on yourself. And so I just applaud you. But yeah, so back. Oh, well, 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 thank you. Yeah, actually, I had a, a talk with a physician at, at the hospital yesterday where uh, we were just reflecting, saying, how many things are we doing now? In 20 years, are we going to reflect back and say, we, we had it all wrong? And, and it really seems as though the, uh, the aspects of health that are, are going to be the best for everyone really are contained in preventative medicine, which includes uh, eating well and, and living well, uh, a good lifestyle. And in how many things that we're doing now are, are flash in the pan and we'll find out, right. man, that probably wasn't the best uh, way to approach this. So, so I think it's important to keep an open, open mind and, mm-hmm. and as data comes out. And I think it's the critical part is to, to really scrutinize the data, like know where it's coming from. Is it some guy or woman who has no, no real authority to be making these claims that changing public perceptions, which can be very dangerous, or is it someone who's studied this all their life or, they have a right. great ex- experience with this where they can be more objective. Well, I think, uh, I think yeah, that comes back to, you know, and that, that happens with time, right? No fat diets and then full fat diets and low. It, it, I mean, that, this is what's going on right now. And there's a lot of misinformation, but I, I think that actually, and it's one of the reasons we started healthiest is, you know, someone needs to kind of draw a line in the sand to say, no, this is what's the science backed evidence around whatever the subject is and diet, nutrition, or, chemical use, things like that. So I, I do think that, and consumers are so confused because they can't figure out who to listen to. So I know that there's right. for that, but I do <clears throat> completely agree. We hope that we're not making a lot of decisions now. I, I think it's going to even out. I feel like the pendulum swinging. So, well, let's get back to your... So when you, you were saying that you had, had really, after 10 years, learned a lot and decided to create this product. Yeah. So when we went into to make tummy drops, the first thing we did is, is my wife's very good at coming up with names. And so she came up with the name tummy drops that, hey, that's, that's perfect. And then uh, what I did is we had learned, especially in the training for gastroenterology, a little bit about the, the natural ways to approach this. And, and ginger and peppermint oil stood out in my mind as having the best data. So I didn't want to reinvent the wheel and try to forage some berry from some forest that would never be able to you know, reproducibly make a good extract from. So started with ginger and peppermint oil and then scoured the medical research to determine what cultivars might be the best, what doses we should be looking at. And then at that point, we wanted to be very objective in our design. So we uh, worked with an institutional review board and IRB and performed clinical trials on these lozenges that we had come up with uh, just to make sure that there were, we could make these claims and have scientific support for that. Well, that's um, and that took a couple years. Underline that what you're saying is so important. I think it's important for consumers to understand that brands like yours are, are going to the research because there's a lot of misinformation around like, well, you know, natural medicine is snake oil and it's not scientifically backed. But in fact, a lot of it is scientifically backed and there are clinical, you know, not, not enough yet, but there are research studies being done on the natural remedies. And so it's really great to hear that you took that into account because the product is a, you know, is a simple product that I would imagine a lot of consumers don't think you did a lot of research on. So it's great to hear. Oh yeah, no, without a doubt. It it was one thing where it, it it was really congruous with where we wanted to go with this product and and what our backgrounds were is, is we're, we're scientists and a little bit of uh, artists at the same time, I would argue, but with that science background, uh, you, it, it's, the, it's objective and it's, 
it's something that we had to hold ourselves like, accountable to. And, and that's one thing we found is as we've been around long enough that, that there are competing products that will pop up. But unfortunately, that they're not really designed by people who have a good understanding of where they've seen patients who in the office who've had these problems where they've, you know, scoured the, the research and had this hands-on experience with the botanicals themselves. So they might say, oh, ginger's good. Let's add ginger and or peppermint oil is good. Let's add uh, peppermint oil and not really right. knowing that they're not all the same. Like you could take 10 different ex- right. extracts from the same ginger and have them be markedly different. And then if you start to add in the different varietals of ginger that are out there, it almost becomes mind boggling on the amount of sources of, of ginger that you can right. have. And for instance, you might put something in there that really like putting a ginger spice that you would cook with. And, and it's really not going to do anything at, at the low doses that are, that you, you would put in right. something for like a so lot. How of, did you come up? Did you guys have to go through a lot of iterations till you got to the product you actually put out in the market? We did actually, and and then I'll, I'll and that's a good segue to we're we're actually making some changes this year as well based on new insights that we've had. So that where we started with was getting as many sources of peppermint oil extract and ginger extract as we could, and then that was kind of the phase one is sorting through those before we put it in a lozenge form. So which ones we would mark on palatability, or because if something tasted terrible, we weren't going to use right. it. And then the clinical efficacy. And then when we narrowed it down, and then we were able to really fine tune the dosage when we had it in the, the lozenge form. And, and that's actually a question I get a, a quite frequently is, well, why did you put it in a lozenge as opposed to a capsule? And, and, and there, there are several reasons for that. Is, I mean, it, it's fairly easy to put a ginger extract powder into a capsule. But the problem is, is you have to wait for it to get digested and leave the stomach and you're talking about hours later and plus it's there's bioavailable it's, or it's not as the result is not as fast you're saying if you had done it, it exactly and it, it also doesn't take into account some of the complexities of absorption even that begins in your mouth the so-called like buccal absorption and then the effects that can occur on nausea in particular are related to insulin release that come down to actually eating foods as opposed to capsules. So it's a very complex system. And, and then the other benefit, though, is by putting it in a, a lozenge form where it's basically organic cane sugar and then organic brown rice syrup, is that uh, the, the hard candy base is something that it has a, one of the biggest problems that can, can affect its shelf life is how much moisture is in it. And so the hard candy base is, is basically cooked at super hot temperatures for a long, long time. So it's very, very dehydrated. So as a result, you get a very shelf-stable product where two years later, the ginger or the peppermint oil is just as potent. So it did have that benefit as well. And then plus, and it's, I know ginger and peppermint oil aren't for everyone, but a lot of people love the flavors of ginger and peppermint. And that allowed the, the artists in us to come out and in fact, one of my best friends is a is a chef, and he, and he helped us formulate some of these new flavors. So we're able to actually give people a, a pleasant experience in addition to just taking this. And predominantly, people are going to take it not because it tastes good, but because it's helping them. But but hey, if we can make it taste good too, even better. So right. so that's something did where, where we we've just, had fun with with that. Did you, did you have feedback about the sugar and content ever? Or have you gotten feedback? And I. I guess the other that's sort of an ingredient question because I'm really impressed also that that you have all in, in organic ingredients and was that hard to find? So sort of both questions. Oh my goodness, yes, yes, and <laughs> and that's why up until recently we we haven't made the full organic switch over just because sometimes the organic ingredients available weren't weren't as good clinically and and in fact even for our peppermint tummy drops it. it certified uh, by Oregon Till made with organic ingredients, but because the peppermint oil itself is still not organic, we, we can't call the peppermint oil one full organic. But we we had tried about every organic peppermint oil that we could find, and it did not have the same clinical efficacy. So we had to make why the decision. Is, why, why do you think that is? I think a lot of it is just there's a limitations in how many varieties of peppermint oil are out there, as opposed to ginger. Ginger is very in vogue, so there's a, many sources of ginger. Um, but 
peppermint oil is fairly limited. A lot of it's still grown in the U.S., which is which is great. But a lot of the farms are big farms, and they a lot of them haven't embraced organic. And there are smaller farms that are doing organic peppermint, but unfortunately, whether it's the varietal or the the terroir where it's grown or how it's processed into the the extract. It just doesn't have that that same level of efficacy, yeah, and efficacy. so that's something that's on our radar. As soon as we find one that mm-hmm. exactly matches the efficacy what we have, we will do the full switch. But ninety five percent of that product is organic. Yeah. But but the ginger was was actually quite quite difficult to find an organic that would work. But we finally finally found it, and it's and it's fantastic. We actually get the the opportunity to work with specific farmers, and then we process it in a certain way. So it's it's as pure of a ginger extract as we, we could possibly hope for. I mean, that's and, really and great to hear, Justin, because, you know, I interviewed Zigo Foods and she was having a really hard time finding organic cinnamon. And this wasn't really about efficacy because every time she tested it, it turned out it wasn't fully organic, even though the supplier, mm-hmm. because it was just so hard to find authentically, you know, sort of down the supply chain. And we think about that a lot, about how we can help the consumers make sure that they understand what's in the supply chain because labels are often misleading or there's things in the product that you that need to be tested for like glyphosate residue or something else right and, right right and so you know what we hope is that that keeps improving for the consumer so that they're more educated but it's so great to hear sort of how much work you're doing to find the right farms and farmers and products because that's how it'll shift too, so that there, there's more demand for peppermint oil from an organic farmer, from a t- certain varietal. Someone will start to grow it because you know th- there's a need. So that's awesome for you to keep looking. <laughs> I wish yeah, I knew- exactly. And yeah, we're, we're not we're not big enough of a company to grow our own, but that, that's not our maybe our our ten year business plan is right. to have our own peppermint fields that we can process because we do have an excellent partner for uh, the supercritical carbon dioxide extraction because really extracts are what you make them. And so we've identified certain key compounds that we want to be at certain percentages of the total extract. And so, and that's, that's one of the things that makes tummy drops unique is that this is kind of our formula that we've developed. And, and now with this, this partner who can deliver that in a, an organic method, it's just amazing. So at, at some point we might be able to to take our own peppermint leaves and send them to, for them to process right. for us. So tell me about where you are sort of as a business. You said you've been doing this for almost 10 years and you also are still practicing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's one thing where I, I want to continue to practice medicine until in one shape or form until the day I, I die. I will probably at some point I'll get, I'll get too old and I don't want to be a, a cranky old, old doctor, but I would like to, <laughs> to shift to maybe a teaching role at that point. And, and where I work now, I do have that opportunity to work with residents and, and fellows, which is, which is really, it's humbling and, it, and it's an amazing experience. But I do, to stay relevant, especially for what I'm doing with tummy drops, I think it's important to keep seeing patients, being immersed in the field of gastroenterology and, and nutrition as well. But it, it does make it a little, a little hairy sometimes because we, <laughs> my wife and I have three children, two dogs who are pretty much children. and Yes. And I have to divide exactly. my clinical time with family time with with time for for tummy drops. But it, it, it's it, it's been a a really enjoyable ride. Yeah, you know it's interesting because I, I think you know they talk a lot. There's a lot of nutritionists or kind of even Instagram celebrities talking about inflammation and the confusion around inflammation. But what I really do understand is it's linked to all these other chronic diseases. And so, you know, the, the, I, and I actually think mo- a lot of people live their whole life with discomfort when it comes to some, you know, one of these issues, whether it's, you know, gluten intolerance or perceived gluten intolerance or bloating, nausea, like constipation, bowel, irritable bowel syndrome. I think a lot of Americans get used to it and live their whole life and they're not realizing that's also linked to other diseases. So it's just... It's a really, it seems like a very simple solution, a tummy drop, but it's actually oh, yeah. a much bigger issue. And that's what oh. I was asking. So sort of where do you see, you know, how is the business doing and where do you, where do you guys sell right now? And what, what do you kind of see as next things coming for your business? Oh yeah. A lot of great questions in there. I love it, <laughs> but, but you're right. The, 
digestive issues will always be ubiquitous. And in particular in, in the United States where our, our diets and lifestyles and activity is not one that's in general healthy. And so it, the United States is, is much worse than a lot of other, other countries. Yeah. And, and in fact, in, in, in Europe, especially regions where there's uh, the Mediterranean diet is followed, it, I mean, people live to 105. There's a, a town, Campo de, de Mele, and where I think the average life expectancy is at least 95. And they, they don't really remove things from their diet, but they eat healthy because that's what the land provides. Yeah. for them and they're very active and interactive with their lands and and it's just something that that in, in the united states unfortunately with the industialization of, of food uh, we've lost a, a lot of that i know but, but you're right a lot of layers to that i mean i i'm i have a real strong feeling about you know pesticides and how it's in our water and in our all of our products and you know so i've always thought and learned a little bit more around Sort of modern day growth of corn and wheat and soy and then genetic modification. And that's for another subject, but I, or another time for us to discuss. But I do think that when you talk about Europe where they don't have that kind of pesticides are not allowed, they don't allow genetically modified seeds. Like just, you're just talking about a completely different food site, food system there. So oh, yeah. that you point to them no. and, and then what they're eating and the processed, but let's get back to your business for a minute. Tell me, you know, Oh yeah. What do you, you know, what, what do you, what's next for you guys? And what do you, where do you sell? You know, I'm, I'm curious so you can share with the listeners sort of where they oh, can find yeah. you and who, who's really buying your product. Yeah. Oh, so, so great, great question. So, so where we're at right now is, is this big, this is a big year for us in terms of a, a rebranding, both in terms of just the, the packaging that we have, but we've listened to our customers and, and, as I alluded to a little earlier, is that the flavors of ginger and peppermint can be very strong for, for some people. And they want to have the benefits, but they say, there's no way I can take your tummy drop because it's too spicy. Uh -huh. And so what we've done is we have a whole spectrum of intensity now where we just add basically less of that active botanical. And we have some really fun flavor combinations. So there should really be a tummy drop for everyone now where... If one was too spicy, hey, this is perfect. Or if one wasn't spicy right. enough, we have one that's really, really spicy now. And so that's all going to be happening in the next few months. And we also have little convenience tins as well uh, where people can easily those. put They're them. So cute. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really happy with those. They, they've come out really well. We, we work with a fantastic designer and she did an amazing job. And, and, they're, and the packaging something we're still going to continue to work on. It's, it's definitely more eco-friendly. The tins are recyclable, reusable. The, the bags that we have, uh, we're able to actually increase the barrier function. So it, it's something where it will, the shelf life will be even greater. And it's about half the size. And that always worries me, especially in the, the U.S. market where something is going to go from super size in appearance to half size. I can assure yeah. our customers, oh, they're exact same grams of tummy drops right. in there, but it's a lot more eco-friendly. You guys sell those products on Amazon and then on your own store as well? So what We do. And, and then at a variety of brick and mortar, at, at this point, it's mainly the natural foods market. So whole foods market, especially in the Midwest region is where we really, we started this company. We're in the, all the whole foods in the Midwest region. And then there's fresh time. And then some local St. Louis markets like Deerbirds and Straub. And then there's a variety of travel gift shops. Uh, there's a lot of people in hospital gift shops and travel gift shops now who are taking on tummy drops. Because what we've learned is I, I developed these products for a specific uh, like patients in mind where, where patients had celiac disease or they had mm -hmm. IBS. And then what we found over the years is that tummy drops could really benefit everyone who has a, has a stomach and a digestive system because it is such a ubiquitous problem. And so some of our, our biggest customers now are pregnant women, mm -hmm. people who are traveling like on a cruise ship or an airplane, and, and of course, all the medical conditions. And, and probably for me, the most reaffirming thing that's happened to tummy drops is that I actually get requests from doctor's offices and healthcare professional offices saying, we love your tummy drops. We want to give them to our patients. And do you have a sampling program? So a few years ago, we did start a sampling program. And now there's OB offices, midwife offices, oncologists, uh, dietitians, 
gastroenterologist. The list goes on and on where they actually recommend tummy drops. And it's, it's fantastic for us because it really reaffirms what would that. Asked, that what, what would they have requested or, or, or what would they have offered to their patients instead of tummy drops in the past? You know, what are you replacing? Yeah. So, so a lot of times it would be, it would be a medicine where let's say if someone told their doc, Hey, I'm going on a trip and I get motion sickness, it would be, you know, your Dramamine, things like that. That would be sedating. Or if it was for say a woman with morning sickness, that it would definitely be a prescription medication. And so it, it's something where it does give customers a very safe and well-studied natural alternative to that. And, and that's really the goal of our company is to become synonymous with the best or most premium choice where if you have an upset stomach or some kind of digestive issue and you want the best natural option, it's tummy drops. And, and by only having four ingredients in each tummy drop, that we can really scrutinize each one and make sure it's going to be as best as possible. And, and like I said, we finally just switched over to an organic ginger because we, we believed in this, this new ginger and we studied it and it was fantastic. And, and it's a little different flavor from our other one. So if there's some tummy drop fans who are used to one ginger, I, I can say I personally prefer the new taste and our tasting panels that we put together really enjoy the new taste, but it will taste a little different. Just, and then the, really the other big it. thing is, oh, yeah. is brown rice syrup, which is so maligned. It, and, and it's just something where it, it's a great example where having a little information can be very dangerous and can really affect the public perception because people are rightly concerned that rice could contain heavy metals like arsenic mm -hmm. but but it's only one little pick one little aspect to the whole story of, of heavy metal contamination in our food supply in general have you heard of the detox project it's a really interesting project where they do testing on products for 400 contaminants and really talking about that. And I think what's so great about what they're doing is that they can really help brands figure out, you know, what, how to really keep improving the, right. the, the authenticity of their product, because it's, you're doing the best you can be, but you still have to trust the farmer and you have to trust the extraction location and you, and look at their testing. So there's a lot of layers to making sure you're putting out the best product, even for companies that are completely intentionally trying, it's hard. So I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I really love, I mean, I love your product. I, we were, we were working on a subscription box at the time for pregnant and new moms and we've shifted into being, you know, purely technology to help consumers find healthy products. And so mm -hmm. integrating with Amazon and soon some other e-tailers and love that your products are there. And I love the new packaging. And what would you say would be where you will be in 10 years? Do you imagine that doctors are? quote unquote, prescribing tummy drops versus some of these medications? I mean, it sounds like it's on the way. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's already happening and, and it, will be, right. it will be fantastic. And, and, and I think there is a, a shift in, in medicine right now where a lot of the traditionally trained like MD physicians, and it's a little different sometimes with, with, with DO physicians, they, they have a little more of that kind of integrative where they do integrate kind of natural medicine into it as well. And certainly yeah, chiropractors are fully on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know what a DO is, the osteopath. And I imagine, I mean, you know, what, it, it is hard if you're, if you're not seeing a natural practitioner, or you, if you're not used to going to an acupuncturist or osteopath or who do lean more to, or towards alternatives. But it is nice to hear that traditional doctors are now thinking of ways to, you know, steer their, their patients toward more natural alternatives, at least to try. Right, right. And, and that, that's something that's changed in, in my practice of, since I, I graduated medical school in 2001. So it's 18 years. And over that 18 years, uh, really a tremendous shift in, in the ability and the, the willingness of, of physicians to, uh, to go ahead and, and embrace a natural world. That's really exciting. I mean, I think what, that's what, what we hope. And I've always thought um, not to use our brand too much, but it's not about Eastern or Western. It's like, what's the healthiest way to treat a patient? How, how can we take every tool in our toolkit and treat the patient the, the right way? And some patients do end up needing certain elements of traditional or you know Western medicine, but there's a lot that can be done that you know, less expensive, doesn't have the side effects, or even you know, in in concert with 
traditional medicine. So I really appreciate that you are a traditional physician, but really saw that actually there were there were some other remedies that could be less invasive and maybe have less side effects, but still get the job oh, done. It, so, you know, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And one of my biggest pushes, and it's something that in the future we might integrate with, with tummy drops more, is, is a truly healthy diet, not a, not a fad diet. And, and there's diets that will come and go on popularity. And, there's, and there's, nowadays there's a fair amount of medical research. And, but the one that always in my mind has, has stood the test of time and, and is always in the top three, no matter what society of medicine is looking at the results, is that Mediterranean diet. And, I, I really thought about that a lot, and it's not just the foods, but the foods and, and the, the the drinking of, of wine for for people who who, who do that. I mean, that's definitely a critical part of it. But it goes so far beyond the actual consumption of food and beverage. It, it goes down to the the lifestyle and the interactivity. And and there's even studies that show that you know just the act of preparing a meal over several hours with your family and then enjoying that meal over several hours. It fosters such great conversations that the children grow up and they're they're more successful in their life and and they're yeah. they're healthier. They make healthier decisions. They live longer. So that that's something that that really is is the future, and that would fall into preventative medicine. But but that, yes. that's really where I think the future of of health. I do too. I mean, I our big vision at Healthiest was always to be a comprehensive health platform, and I'm actually working with some businesses right now doing personalized nutrition. And I, I think I've always thought there's truths, right? There's specific bits of information that pretty much everyone needs to know that's true. Like arsenic is not something you should eat. Smoking is likely to lead to lung cancer. Don't build right. a test dose. Like there's some really simple thing. And I think the same kind of goes for diet and nutrition. I do think it's personalized, but I also think there's some truths. And when it comes to really genetically modified you know, soy or corn or wheat, like chances are that's going to cause inflammation and that you should avoid it. And I think the more Americans get the information, the diet will start to lean towards what looks more like a Mediterranean diet, right? Like more fish and, and more natural vegetables and not grown with pesticides. And there's so much about that diet that's just kind of logical why it would be better. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, no. Yeah. And it, and there is a lot of truth to that. Just if you boil it down to the the basics of, you know, are the foods you're eating shifting the balance towards inflammation or, or antioxidants, which are against that? It, I mean, right. it's much more complicated than that. But that's a great right. starting point. If someone's like, should I have this blueberry or this hamburger? It's it's, right. it's kind of a no no brainer on which one right. is going to to foster. Well, foster and even just stuff. I think, and I think there's a miss confused that a lot of the American public wouldn't respond to the right information. I actually think they would. And that's what I'm excited about getting the word out and excited about your product. I love it. I hope that listeners will go and try it or take it with them on their next vacation or anyone's having oh. it. Too. And I love your new packaging. We'll make sure that it's oh, thank you. live. And um, I just really appreciate your time, Dustin. I, I appreciate that it's hard to, to basically have two jobs and three kids, yeah. and dogs, but you've managed to do that, and um, because you believe in it, and because the product wasn't out there without what you guys are doing. Oh uh, well, well, Krista, I, I really appreciate your time as well, and yeah, and I, I love to talk talk more sometime. I have a whole whole bunch of thoughts swimming in my my head now <laughs> about about well, this. Great, let's yeah. do this again. Let's definitely do this again, and we can talk about you know some other subjects. I think I think again, the goal is to really get get the word out about natural remedies, about great products, and you know how to live a healthy life without the use of chemicals and ingredients that are harmful. So that's what you're doing. So thank you again, and I look forward to talking with you and doing another another session where we can just talk about so many improvements in the in the area of natural medicine. Great, great. Well, thank you so much, Crystal. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Is It Healthy podcast. Be sure to visit healthiest.io to join the conversation, access show notes, and download our free browser extension that helps you find all the healthiest approved products while you shop.